Hello. Welcome. We'll just wait a few minutes for folks to join our breakout room. Welcome folks, we'll start in just a minute. Okay, I think we're good to get started. Um, hopefully everyone has accessed the link okay. Um, so welcome folks to the Living Off Campus breakout of our Living at University session today. Thanks for joining. Hopefully you learned some good info um, and everyone's probably now hungry after listening to Josh talk about our meal plans. I can confirm that the food here is really good. Um, so welcome everyone. My name is June Baldwin and I use she and her pronouns and I am the coordinator of neighborhood relations and off-campus living here at the University of Guelph. And I have Juliet with me um, who will be presenting with me today. I'll let you introduce yourself. Hi everyone, I'm Juliet. Um, I'm the program assistant for off-campus living and I also use she and her pronouns. Perfect, thank you. And we're just going to get started talking about living off campus. We'll be going through um, a bunch of different content. If folks have questions, there is a Q&A option at the top. Um, if you want to submit questions throughout, you're welcome to do so, or you can wait to the end just in case that question gets answered. And then we'll also be sharing our contact information if things come up after today or if we need to have a longer discussion about your question. Okay, so here's an overview of what we'll be talking about today. So a general idea of what is off-campus living, um, chatting about where students live, the process of finding roommates, if that's something that you're looking for, we have some resources for you, the average prices of rentals, um, where you can look for listings. There's some websites that are general to anyone looking to rent, and there's some that are more specific for student rentals. Um, we'll be chatting about the showing and viewing process of rental units, living standards, the application process, red flags to look out for, and then also chatting a bit about getting to campus and building community here once you arrive. Okay, so what is off-campus living? Um, we are a unit within the student experience department at the university, and we're here to support all students whether they're living off campus already or if they're looking to live off campus in the future. We provide presentations and workshops such as this one. Uh, we also offer advising, one-on-one -on -one advising appointments for all things rental living. So for example, if you're having an issue with your landlord or roommates, or if you have questions about um, your tenant rights, we're here to help. We also offer lease, sublease, and application reviews. So if you're receiving a lease from a landlord or an application and you're not sure if what they're asking you to sign is legitimate, we can have a look at that and let you know our thoughts. We also provide a lot of programming and events for off-campus students, so making sure that we're building those social connections as well. You can contact us anytime at ocl at uoguelph.ca. Okay, so where do students live? So there is not like one single concentrated student area like you might see at some other universities. Students are spread all throughout Guelph, um, many surrounding neighborhoods close to the university that are also close to things like grocery stores, the mall, entertainment, et cetera. Um, the majority of Guelph housing is individual homes, lots of houses that may have more than one unit in them, townhouses, that kind of thing. But there are also some apartment style units as well. 
Um, and then there's also some purpose built student housing as well, which are typically apartment buildings such as Solstice, Edinburgh Village, or Alma. Um, so if you're interested in looking into those options, you definitely can. Um, typically, they're operating under a wait list because they're a popular option for students. Um, so if you're interested in this type of housing, I definitely recommend reaching out sooner than later or at least getting on that wait list, maybe for the next academic year. Most students do take the bus to campus, and we also have a lot of commuter students as well. So students who might be coming to campus um, every day from other communities or cities in the greater Toronto area um, or Kitchener-Waterloo area. And we also have a lot of um, students who commute from rural towns as well. Okay, so finding roommates, this might be something you're in the process of doing. Maybe you've already found your roommates, which is great, um, but we'll just go through some tips and tricks for finding roommates if that is the stage that you're at at this point. Um, so there's a few different ways you can search for roommates. You can use the I am a Griffin app. If you haven't already downloaded it, I recommend it. There's um, kind of a general chat function on that app that you could use if you're looking either for housing or if you're looking for um, roommates as well. Um, but more specifically for roommate finding, placesforstudents.ca does have a roommate finder tool. Um, we'll go over that in just a second on the next slide. There's also lots of different groups out there based on what your year of study is or what your program is or maybe even a club that you're interested in. A lot of them will have like either a Discord channel or a Teams channel or a Facebook group. Um, so feel free to use if you're on any of those um, social networks to just kind of take a look and see what you can find because there might be other people in your program or in your year that are looking for the same thing that you are. Okay, so we're just going to do a little walkthrough of the roommate finder on places for students. So the first thing you want to do is search the University of Guelph. This always takes a second to load, at least on my phone. Okay, and then you can click on the University of Guelph. Places for Students also has a um, listing platform on there, so it's a good place to search for housing as well. But today we'll just look at the roommate profiles. So you have to agree to their disclaimer, which talks a lot about different um, scams or red flags to look out for and stuff. And then you will see the roommate profiles here. Um, so you can post your own or you can look through, you can connect with folks that way. Okay, selecting a roommate. Um, so these are some things that you should be considering when you're looking for a roommate. I know it can be really hard, especially if you're finding um, roommates that you maybe haven't met before, trying to find out what a good fit is for you and for them. Um, so some things to consider are getting along. What do we have in common? Will we enjoy each other's company? Are they easy to get along with? Would we enjoy the same things? And is that something that's important to me? conflicts. So what boundaries do we have? Will they respect my boundaries? Can I be open and honest with them? How will we resolve conflicts if they come up? Thinking a lot about conflict resolution before entering into a roommate relationship is really important and it can prevent a lot of issues. Um, the off-campus living team can also provide roommate mediation if needed or if you just need to chat about your situation or if you're wondering what your options are, you can always contact us. For lifestyle, will we have similar schedules, sleep schedule, work schedule, school schedule? Um, do we have the same lifestyle? Does one of us party more than the others? Are we aligned on how we feel about the use of alcohol or other substances in our home? And how many people do we want to live with in a rental space? Also thinking about things like guests and stuff like that. For safety, do I feel safe with them? Do either of us have allergies? Am I okay with pets? Or do we both have pets or all of us have pets? Will they get along? Um, lots of important things to think about when you're deciding to live with someone. Okay, so this slide has a overview of current rental prices. Um, so we pulled these from listings that were geared towards student rentals specifically in Guelph. Um, so this isn't all of Ontario or anything like that. This is specific to Guelph. And um, we got these from the Canon, Places for Students, and Red Panda. Um, and they're not including sublet listings because those are often um, 
a little discounted from regular rent prices. So I know there's a lot of numbers up on this screen, um, but hopefully it makes sense. But basically for a one bedroom, that is the only one of this list that is a full unit. So um, that range from 950 to 2500 is for a one bedroom or a studio apartment or basement apartment um, style house. The rest of them reflect the prices for one bedroom in a shared home. So if you're looking at the five bedroom range of 600 to 1300, it's a massive range, um, but that would be the price of one room in a five bedroom home. So as you can see, the range is really, really large. So it might take some time to find what you're looking for price wise. I know the prices are pretty significant. They have definitely gone up in recent years. Um, but this is just kind of a general thing of what to expect when you start your search. Okay, so some additional expenses that you might face um, as a tenant living in a rental unit. So utilities may or may not be included, so you need to budget accordingly for that. Um, usually the listing ads will explain whether or not they're included, um, but if they aren't saying that in the listing ad, you wanna make sure you find out from the landlord. Um, the utilities that you may have to pay for uh, in addition to your rent would be Guelph Hydro, which is through Electra, which provides water and electricity, and or Union Gas, which is gas if you have gas heat in your home. Um, so that's an average um, of an additional $40 to $70 a month. It depends on um, how big your unit is, how old your unit is, what kind of heat it has, that kind of thing. Um, other things that may or may not be included are internet and parking. Typically, internet is not included. Um, however, there may be some situations where it is, um, but usually students are responsible for kind of organizing that themselves. If you have questions about that, feel free to reach out to us and we can kind of get you started with some sources of where to look, some resources, things like that. Um, the pricing may vary depending on the company, what you're looking for, that kind of thing. Um, parking is another thing that sometimes landlords will charge an additional amount for. So if you do have a car that you're planning on bringing with you to university, that's something you'd want to consider in the searching for housing process. Okay, so listing services. Um, it's important to note here that the university does not manage or administer any of these listing sites, um, but here are some student focused sites that you can use, places for students, RentPanda, thecanon.ca. Um, the Canon is um, specific to Guelph, places for students in Panda operate in multiple different cities. The Canon is just in Guelph. Um, and then the University of Guelph off-campus rental and sublets, which is a Facebook group, again, not moderated by us, um, but it's a popular choice for students who are searching. And then the less student-focused sites would be Kijiji, Facebook Marketplace. Um, so they can be really good sites and they definitely have a lot of legitimate listings. Um, they just aren't necessarily directly geared towards student listings. So landlords may not be familiar with renting to students. Um, so if you have questions about that, definitely reach out. Um, and then be sure that on all the sites you're using, caution to prevent being scammed or left without housing or any financial things that you may have provided. Um, if you're not sure of the quality of a listing, you can send it to us, um, the off-campus living team, and we will let you know what our opinion is. Okay, so here is the Canon. We'll just look through what it looks like to search. The Canon has classified, so they have housing ones, which we'll look at today, but they also have classifieds for, um, for textbooks, things like that. It's a really great place to get secondhand textbooks. I don't think my video is working, um, but that's okay. This is what the main page looks like. You can sort what you're looking for by the bedroom size that you want. Um, make sure that you're putting offering if you're looking to find something and not wanted um, because wanted will be other folks who are looking. You can post a wanted ad if you'd like, um, but the main way that you'll be able to find a rental is reaching out to landlords who have posted their unit. And I will pass it over to Juliet. All right, so 
once you've browsed those listing sites um, and you're ready to start looking, um, your best bet is to start to arrange viewings. So use the listing sites and contact the landlord for all the places that you are interested in. Um, don't rely on photos to, ter to determine interest. Um, they may be very outdated image or may not be accurate at all. So when reaching out to landlords, you can give a brief description about yourself, like your name and program, and ask to set up a viewing. Make sure that you're reading the description of the unit. Um, it likely lists information about other tenants, utilities, parking, rules about pets, and so on. Um, do not limit yourself to reaching out to just one landlord or a listing at a time. They are receiving a lot of interest and you may not hear back from some because they're going very quickly. So ask as many times as you want. Um, reach out to those landlords and that's your best option. Ask for an application in advance of viewing. If it is a unit in high demand, then having a filled out application might help your chances. Um, keep in mind that not all units might have an application. So after you've reached out, the second step is to attend showings, which primarily happens in person. Um, but if you require a virtual showing, you can request this of the landlord. Um, showings are a great time to see the place and get a proper feel for the unit, as well as get to know the landlord and see if they are the right fit for you. So virtual showings. So a live video tour is the most ideal. It can be done over FaceTime, Zoom or Teams, um, but just make sure that it's live. Um, I know a lot of um, landlords like to send already pre videoed uh, walkthroughs um, so make sure that it's a live walkthrough and take your time during the tour um, ensure that the video shows the individual entering the unit to verify that the inside matches the outside uh, look at appliances and common spaces for damage and washrooms look out for signs of mold and mildew make sure there's either a fan or a window um, in kitchens look out for a fan over the stove or nearby window or door and furnishings. If they are included, check that the items shown in the video are the ones that would be there. All right, so in-person showings. Treat these showings like a job interview by being professional. This is your chance to show that you're the right fit for the unit. Um, ask questions also. This is your best opportunity to ask questions you may have. So questions such as internet, parking, laundry, uh, furnishings. Again, if furnishings are included, what items specifically. Um, also get to know the landlord. So if there are other tenants, get to know them too. You will be living with them, so it's important that you're getting to know them. Again, if you're able to fill out an application before the showing, bring it with you to the in-person showing and submit it on the spot if you decide it is a place you would like to live. Um, alternatively, if it's an online application, have it filled out so that when you get home, you can submit it. So living standards, uh, what to look for. So do you have a working smoke alarm on every level and outside every sleeping area? So houses built after 2013 also have a smoke alarm on every level. Um, do you have a working carbon monoxide alarm installed? Do you have two safe ways to get out of the unit in case of a fire? If you are having your husband to sleep in the basement, is there a big enough window or door on your floor leading directly outside so you can get out, get out in case of a fire? If your building has more than four bedrooms sharing one kitchen, is it certified with the city? If your building has two separate kitchen, is it registered with the city? And if you're unsure if it's registered with the city, there is a really good program. Um, you can do tenant inspections, so you can call the city before you move in to see if it's registered or certified. The city can also tell you about building permits or any outstanding compliance, so you can ensure that you are safe when you move in. Even after you move in, you city inspectors can come and see if your rental meets um, the minimum safety standards. So contact them to book a free inspection of your rental unit. Um, that's their number and email. It's a really great program, so highly recommend doing that. All right. So, sorry. <laughs> Once you find a place and you're ready to complete an application, um, so keep in mind this is different than the lease. This is just an application to apply to the place. So there is no standard application um, that landlords use. Um, this is just an ex example of one. 
Landlords will use a variety of applications. I may ask for things, um, different things, and some landlords may not have a formal application. Um, the goal of it is to essentially see, um, seek information to decide whether or not you'll be a good tenant that will not be due damage um, and will pay rent on time. So be prepared that landlords will often ask uh, for guarantors or references for rentals. Um, so have this information ready if possible. Um, it's also a good idea to reach out to your references and guarantors ahead of time so it moves as quick as possible. If you do not have a guarantor, keep in mind that the university is still not able to provide one. Um, so your best option is to talk to the landlord and come up with an alternative. They may ask for a pay stub or bank statement, um, something to just prove that you can pay the rent. Uh, sometimes it's helpful to provide landlords with proof of enrollment and you can request this from the registrar's office. Landlords may ask for a credit check. You do not need to provide a SIN number for them to do run a credit check. Um, they can do this without the information. So our best advice for securing a rental is to be as quick as you can with the whole process. Landlords have a lot of interest right now and there's a lot of comp competition for units. Sometimes it is a matter of being the first one to respond and complete the application. Um, but that being said, you do want to make sure that it's a safe spot. Um, and that it's something you actually want to live in um, before you send a lease. All right, so step four is signing the lease and paying last month's rent. So if and when your application is approved, you should be provided a copy of the standard lease from the landlord, which we will look at the next slide. Um, this will be mostly filled out by the landlord with all the specifics of your unit. So what is included, what is not, the agreed, about, uh, agreed upon monthly rent rate, um, the length of term, which is typically one year, though this does mean um, not mean that you need to move out after the term is up. Um, it will typically switch to a month to month lease. Um, also keep in mind that the lease is a legally binding contract. It is your contract for the unit and you are responsible for their agreed upon terms. Uh, once the lease has been signed, you will likely be required to pay last month's rent deposit. Um, landlords should only be asking for last month's rent payment. However, many will request first month's rent at the time of signing the lease. Also note that landlords should not also should not be asking for a damage deposit either. They are only allowed to ask for a key deposit, uh, which would be the expected amount to replace your keys. So keep in mind the keys are not overly expensive. If they're asking for $500, that is probably not legitimate. Um, all right, so let's say you're moving in the unit on September 1st and you will send the lease on July 10th. You will be expected to pay last month's rent payment on July 10th, and you'll start paying monthly rent payments on September 1st. So last month's rent payment will be used for your final living month um, of living in the unit. So remember this so you don't end up paying double. All right, so this is the standard lease. The lease was created by the Ontario government in 2018, um, and all um, tenancies that are entered upon after 2021, it should be written on the standard lease. Um, and it protects the tenants by helping them know their rights and protects landlords by ensuring their contract is legal under the Residential Tenancies Act. So the RTA outlines your rights of landlords and tenants, and you can find it for free online. Um, it is a pretty long document, so if you ever have questions about the Residential Tenancies Act, you can also reach out to us. If your landlord does not provide you with a standard lease, you can request a copy. Sometimes they make their own, um, but keep in mind if they put in additional clauses that go against the Residential Tenancies Act, you are still protected by it and the standard lease. It also mentions this in the standard lease. Um, so landlords may only you also use one lease for a group of tenants or individual leases for each tenants. Um, there's pros and cons to both, but they are acceptable. This lease applies to tenants that are not living in the same house as their landlord or their landlord's immediate family member. So if you do live with your landlord or their family member, you are not protected under the Residential Tenancies Act. Um, so please reach out if you have any questions about this. We'd happy to advise. We're also happy to review leases or subleases and you can send it to us via email um, or book an appointment with us. 
So red flags to look out for, um, and this goes for um, the listings itself or your communication with the landlord. So if they're unable to meet the landlord or uh, property manager in person, if the landlord is out of town or country and there is no local contact or property manager, if they're unable to see the rental unit in real time, uh, deposits other than last month's rent, any payments prior to signing the lease, and prices and lease terms that are too good to be true. So I know this is, was already kind of talked about, but getting to campus, um, so your student card doubles as the City of Gulf bus pass, covered by your student fees. Most bus lines come to campus, so majority of students living off campus use the bus. Um, you could tap and go on all bus routes in the city of Guelph and use their on-demand service. Um, so the on-demand service is you can book a ride in advance from any one bus stop in the city to another of your choice. Um, try to find housing that is, is within one bus of the campus. It's uh, it adds difficulty if you have to transfer all the time, so one bus is probably the easiest. Um, and you can check whether the listing or unit sits um, on a bus route using Google Maps. And a good app for checking bus time is the Transit Subway and Bus Time app. Um, really good option. Other transportation options include walking or biking, uh, driving, there are parking permits available, um, commuting, go bus and go train, and students receive 40% off of a discount on Go Transit. And I think it's going back to June. Yeah. Thank you. Um, one other thing that we didn't have on that, um, well, on any of our slides, is that you can actually rent a locker on campus. So if you're coming for long days um, and you're bringing things uh, like maybe food or a lot of books or laptops, like whatever you don't want to carry around with you all day, or if you're going to the gym, you have a bag, those kinds of things, um, locker rental rentals are available in a few different places on campus. Um, so yeah, you can reach out to us if you have questions about that. Um, I think you can find the link online as well. Um, just wanted to mention that because that's a useful tool sometimes for students who are coming in um, from off campus. Um, okay, so we talked about eating on campus um, before the breakout session, but thought I would just briefly go over eating off campus. So um, if you're living off campus, you should have access to a kitchen. Um, and hopefully you'll be close to a grocery store. There's a lot of grocery stores in Guelph. Um, I just put some down here. So as far as like the less expensive grocery stores we have in the city, there are no frills, Food Basics, Freshco and Walmart um, and multiples of those throughout the city. Um, so if you want access to one of those, um less expensive stores maybe check where they are in relation to where you, the unit you're looking at is um, you can use google maps for that you can reach out to us if you're kind of wondering um and then we also have zares which is the same as loblaws if you aren't familiar with the name zares um and then metro and longos and then there's some um, more independent grocery stores as well um, that may carry certain food items that you don't find at kind of those mainstream stores we have the ethnic supermarket uh, which is a really large grocery store with a lot of different options um, jan's latin market uh, angelino's tan fats and sapa middle eastern so there's, and that is not an exhaustive list. There's lots of little stores as well um, that carry a variety of different cuisines and foods. So if you're not finding what you're looking for at those main stores, um, feel free to reach out to us and we can kind of hopefully point you in the right direction of a store that might have what you're looking for. Um, the university does also offer during the fall and winter semester a market on campus for fresh food and it's, um, a pay scale so there's different options for getting it a little bit cheaper and things like that and um, the campus does also have a food bank so if you're interested in that um, the central student association runs the on-campus food bank there may be a wait list i'm not 100 percent sure but feel free to look into that or connect with us and we can share that resource with you um, for eating off campus, the ultra food plan, which was discussed earlier as well, does work at a lot of off campus locations. So I would say a lot of restaurants 
off campus, near campus, downtown, throughout the city will accept that meal plan as well. Um, you don't necessarily receive the discount that you would if you're eating on campus with that plan, um, but sometimes that's a nice easy option if you just have your student card with you. You can pay for food on the go, um, including delivery and things like that. Um, we mentioned the bus and the bus is included with your um, student card. However, there is um, your meal plan can also pay for taxis through a local company, Red Top Taxi. So if you're in a situation where you need a taxi to go somewhere, um, you can use that plan to pay for it. Okay, so building community and staying connected at U of G. So living off campus does not mean you should be any less connected to campus and everything going on at the university. Here are some ways that you can stay connected and start building that community here. So the Start U of G events like the one today, um, they're happening all throughout the summer. So definitely a good way to kind of learn about different things that you could get involved with on campus. And then we will have orientation week events. So there will be a lot of events that are open to all new students, incoming students, um, and there will be some specific ones for off-campus students as well. Um, they'll either be run by us or by different groups off on campus. Um, the off-campus university students or OCUS is a student group that specifically runs programming and events for off-campus students. They do a lot of really cool things starting in orientation week. Um, so definitely look into them and join their group so that you can kind of stay in the know about what things they're planning. Um, there's also a huge amount, I think over 250 or something, student clubs and organizations. So there really is something for everyone. So if you have any hobbies, activities, things that you're interested in, um, definitely look into what clubs and groups are available for that. And there will be lots of event days on campus throughout orientation week where you can connect with those clubs. Um, for off-campus living, we run weekly social events for off-campus students. They are usually on campus and we'll do a variety of different things, activities. We've done tie-dyeing, we've done movie nights, we have done some snack events, um, really whatever you may be looking for, we're open to doing as an event. So that main goal is really just to help students connect each other with each other um, and start building that community as well. Um, and then we have Griff Life, which I have a video that may or may not work on the next slide of. Um, so Griff Life is, oh perfect, it's working, um, a great place to find all of the events that are going on, not just for off-campus students, but for all students, all clubs and groups will use this platform. Um, you do need to sign in usually if you want to RSVP to events and things like that using your Guelph um, mail email account. Um, and this is where you can just look at any kind of particular day or you can search what you're looking for and it will show you all of the events coming up. All of the orientation week events will be on there. Um, so you can just scroll through, see what you're interested in. You can filter it by free food if you're looking for some free snacks or lunch or something. Um, and there's a lot of different ways that you can connect. And then you can also join organizations through Griff Life so that you can kind of stay um, up to date with what their upcoming events are. Perfect. So that is everything for our presentation today, uh, featuring my dog, Oscar. Um, I'm trying to make him the mascot of off campus living. Um, if anybody has any questions, feel free to put them into our Q&A and we will answer as many as we're able to. But thank you so much for coming and really excited to welcome you to the university. Just a reminder, if you do have a question, you'll just have to put it through the Q&A option. Perfect. And if nobody has any questions, you are free to go. Thanks so much for joining our session. Feel free to email us if you want to set up an appointment or if you just have any questions about the housing process. This video will also be posted on YouTube in a few days. We have another 
um, searching for housing specific presentation that's already on the student experience YouTube channel as well. Um, so feel free to watch those as another resource. Perfect. Okay, not seeing any questions. I think we're good to end the meeting. Thank you everyone and have a great day.